Good morning. Good morning. And we're live. Hey, man, we just want to welcome you, Elder Vince Carson, here at New Life Church. We just thank you all for joining us today. We just thank God for his presence and his peace that we feel in this place today. We just thank you all that's tuning in with us all over the globe. Those yes. of you that's tuning in from Uganda, we saying hello to you and God bless. We just love you guys. Those even tuning in all the way in Asia as well. Yes. We just thank you for all just tuning in also. What about I, my friends on the East Coast? Oh, the East Coast, the West Coast, Australia, they all are here with us today. Yes. Uh, whatever time zone you are in, we just thank God that you took out the time to be with us today. And here at New Life 2024, we're preparing for battle. And Psalms 144 verse 1 reads, Praise the Lord, my rock, who trains me for war, who trains me for battle. Amen. Words to live by, Proverbs chapter 18, verses 11 through 20. Rich people trust their wealth to protect them. Well, they think it is like the high walls of a city. Proud people be ruined, but the humble will be honored. Amen. Amen. Anyone who answers without listening is foolish and confused. Come on now. The will to live can get you through sickness, but no one can live without, with a broken spirit. Amen. The mind of a person with understanding gets knowledge. The wise person listens to learn more. Taking gifts to important people will help get you in to see them. Amen. Amen. The person who tells one side of a story seems right until someone else comes and asks questions. Well. Out. <laughs> Throwing lots can settle arguments and keep the two sides from fighting. Amen. A brother who has been insulted is harder to win back than a walled city and arguments separate people like the barred gates of a palace. Amen. People will be rewarded for what they say they will be rewarded by how they speak. Amen. And there was words to live by. Amen. Responsive reading coming from Psalms chapter 138. I read the leader, you read the congregation. Yes. Lord, I would thank you with all my heart. I would sing to you before the gods. I will bow down facing your holy temple. And I will thank you for your love and loyalty. On a day I called to you, you answered me. You made me strong and brave. Lord, let all the kings of the earth praise you when they hear the words you speak. They will sing about what the Lord has done, because the Lord's glory is great. Though the Lord is free, he takes care of those who are humble, but he stays away from the crowd. Amen. Lord, even when I have trouble all around me, you will keep me alive. When my enemies are angry, you will reach down and save me by your power. Amen. All together. Lord, you do everything for me. Lord, your love continues forever. Do not leave us whom you made. Amen. And here at New Life, we're moving forward. August 21st, Bible study over Zoom, 6.30 p.m. So make sure you're able to tune in and be part of that. And the topic will be full steam ahead. Amen. Full steam ahead. Amen. Looking forward to that. Yes. August the 25th, Sunday service, 11.30 a.m. 11.30 a.m. over Facebook Live. And the speaker will be Assistant Pastor Vince Carson. <laughs> I gotta make sure I write that in my notes, uh -huh. <laughs> on my calendar, amen. amen. Without further ado, words to, um, I'm here to work, Pastor, <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Rodney Bray. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> amen, it's so good to see everybody in the house today. Amen. Who loves Jesus? Yes. Amen. Amen. We just thank God for Jesus. Uh, you should have been here for our testimony service to hear how many people pressed their way to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. 
You can't press your way and God not bless you. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Um, he has, has a tendency of, of just storing up good things for those who make it through the press. A lot of times we have an enemy of our soul who tries to block and stop us. I love we had what we call our, we have kingdom queens today, y'all. Yes. Women, they don't meet, mix it up. But we had kingdom kings yesterday. And, uh, 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 you know, I, I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to say something that was shared in kingdom kings. And, and I will ask permission later, but I'll ask El De Lorenzo to forgive me now. <laughs> but you shared something that just blessed me. How someone approached him with a prophetic word about uh, how the, uh, in Job, God bragged on Job to the devil and said, you see my servant here. And, and don't don't do that. Don't don't God God just set him up. So the devil, the devil said, nah, nah, take me. You know, you just protected him. He said, All right, I'll pull back stuff. Watch him, watch him. And Job still stood the time and stood the test. But he went through and he didn't like everything. But that word was was given over my brother, and I and I, I appreciated hearing him say that. It's like God is, is saying. Uh, to the devil and say, you see my servant over here, De Lorenzo, he's shining. And the devil over there, man, I'm going to get him, I'm going to get him. But I, I heard the devil say, you see my servant, Jill. <laughs> you see my servant, Anna. <laughs> you see my servant, Elder P. Come on now. Come on now. And that's why that's why we be going through. You see my servant Charmaine? She holding it down. She holding it down. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. But but you know what? We got God on our side. We got God on our side. And uh, and it's it's good to know that friends, God is bragging about you. He's bragging about you, and I, I all of the things. You know, it just didn't start this week with some of the things you've been dealing with, but you, ever since I've known you, <laughs> but, but God, but you said, I'm still stepping. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Well, what did we sing today? All the way? All no way. turning back? No turning back. I've drawn a line. What about you? Yes. Amen. Mm. Yes. yes. And you live by that. Yeah, you live by that. You live by that. God is a good God. God, oh, God yes. loves every last one oh, of you. Yes. And every last one of you. I know there's some testimonies of those of you who are listening. I don't know what you went through just to be with us today or whenever. Some of you will be listening later in this week. I know that. But whenever you tune in, we just want you to know God's got you. And I hear God bragging about you, saying, you see my servant over here in D.C., my servant over here in Uganda. You see my servant, Stephen Capelli, doing a great work for God. You see my friend, Dan, down in Australia. You see my friend. You see him. Amen. Keep living for God. Keep living for God. We've got a word today. We're gonna to try to be as brief as we can because I know y'all got some food ready for us. Yeah, buddy. So we're gonna we're gonna see if we can't tunnel through the hey Clavetta, I can't see the clock, but but if it gets once it gets to be around eleven fifteen, I want you to be going <laughs> slow it down, slow it down. I mean twelve fifteen, sorry, twelve fifteen. When you see I'm sorry, but twelve yeah, but when you see it, when you see it around 12, 15, start be going, yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to cut that thing. I'm going to cut it. Amen. Amen. Uh-oh, uh-oh, my friend that came in the house. Come on, come on. I was just telling him. I'm going to tell him what, you know what God is bragging on you? Yeah. And he's saying, he said, you see my, you see my friend, my servant, 
Kizzy. Yeah. Amen. Yes. We can't stop her. Can't stop her. Yeah. Amen. I, 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 I trust we have a word that will encourage you today. It may challenge some of us as well. It's coming from the book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 57 to uh, 62. And those who are able to stand, uh, and if you can't, you just stay seated. I ain't mad at you. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you any place you go. Jesus said to them, the foxes have holes to live in, the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to rest his head. Jesus said to another man, follow me. But he said, Lord, <coughs> first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the people who are dead bury their own dead. You must go and tell about the kingdom. God. Yes. Another man said, I, I, I will follow you, Lord, but, but, but first, let me go and say goodbye to my family. But Jesus said, anyone who begins to plow a field must keep looking, must, uh, uh, but keeps looking back is of no use in the kingdom. Did y'all hear that? Come on. Keep looking back. You have no use to Ooh. the kingdom of God. So my message today is simply this, don't look back. Amen. Don't look back. Right. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you yes. for your word, which is already settled in heaven. We pray that you would settle it in our heart this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Amen. We're still dealing, y'all, with the military. I ain't forgot that. We, we, we did this whole year, we, 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 we're preparing for battle, is that not right? Yes. And so we're going to put some analogies in this message dealing with the military. But the first point that I want to make before we get to that is this. One of the biggest hindrances to success is when we fail to finish what we started. Come on. Come on. Right. All right. Anybody know what I'm talking yes. about? Yes. 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 Now I want to ask the question, don't y'all answer this, but just to yourself. How many of y'all have started something and you didn't finish it? Come on, come on. Ah. <laughs> I was, I was, people holding their toes and stuff. Ah, that hurts. Well, let me tell you something. You're not alone. A recent survey by the University of Scranton done in January of this year found that only 8% of adults managed to achieve their goals. That means you've got 92% failure rate on finishing what you started. Uh, that don't mean you don't finish anything, but there are some things that we start and we just don't get around with finishing. And how many of y'all are just scratching and say, I wish I had, I wish I had, and then we begin to see why didn't we finish it? Well, I want to help y'all out and look at, um, this is what I found online uh, from LinkedIn, a guy, a consultant named Milos Vucetic. He said, why do most people never finish what they start? He gave seven reasons. He said, a lack of clear goals. Anybody there? Without clearly defined objectives, projects can become overwhelming and lose their purpose, leading to a lack of motivation to finish. Sometimes we, we know we want to go, but we, don't, we haven't set out a game plan. Anybody ever been there before? Don't say amen. Fear of failure. Fear of making mistakes or falling short of expectation discourages some from completing tasks. Seeing failure is a reflection of their ability or self-worth. I ain't gonna start this because I ain't I don't think I'm going I don't I don't know about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But you, you may have started up, but but you just don't keep going because I don't know if I can I can handle this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I can say it for myself, I know sometimes when I would want to get a new job and I would go into government and look at all the jobs and they look at the description of what they had to do and I said I ain't going to apply for that because I don't want to hear somebody say you can't do it. Yeah. Procrastination. Mm. Now, that, that, now that's me. Now I don't know if I'm going to finish this message because I'm going to be procrastinating. <laughs> 
But the tendency to delay action can re result in mounting pile of unfinished tasks. And you, yeah, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. And then bam, 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 the stuff stacks up. You should see my man cave. <laughs> That's the procrastination room. I'm working on it, doggone it. I'm working on it. But I'm going to finish it maybe next month, next year. <laughs> but procrastination can, can stop a lot of people. Shiny object syndrome. Anybody know what the shiny object syndrome is? This is a good one. This the allure of new and exciting opportunities can distract people from their current projects. You start on something, you're excited about it, but then all of a sudden something else comes up, and then you try to, ah! And people say, let's go over to this one, ah! And, and we leave what we started because it's no longer shiny, it's no longer fun, and we didn't roll our sleeves up to finish it. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is a good one because this we can help each other. Lack of accountability. Okay. Without external accountability or support systems, it becomes easier to give up on projects when faced with obstacles or setbacks. I, that was my thing in exercise back when I was in college. And I would be at it, I'd be dutiful, I'd be dutiful, and then I'd fly. But then when I had a partner that used to exercise with me, my alarm clock would get off, go off at six in the morning. I, I say, I want to lay down, but I said, nah, I can't. But Ed's going to be waiting for me. So then I would go. You know, sometimes we need somebody to be accountable Amen. to, to keep us motivated, to keep us going. And somebody can knock on the door. I, did, did you get to that check? Did you, ah, leave, leave, leave me, let me go. But no, nah, but no. Nah. But if there's somebody that you can be accountable to that can help you to just keep, keep it rolling. Perfectionism. Anybody ever been there? I don't know. They, they didn't listen. Everything on here that is my problem. <laughs> you know, you, you want to finish, but then, then you say, nah, nah, I got to do it. All. Nah, nah, nah. That's why I left Clavetta in the house. I'll be, I'll be working on my, you know, on my Saturday manners, my African devotions. And, and I got to run it past her because I want to do it five or six or seven times over. But she'll say, ah, oh, it's okay. Go with it. <laughs> But striving for perfectionism can create a Hey, come on, cut it out. You don't have to talk to the peanut gallery. <laughs> hey, come on. Did, did, did I ask? I didn't ask you to back that up. <laughs> I'm going to go off of that one. Okay, y'all have heard enough. Clavetta's back there talking for me. Lack of, <laughs> hey, look, cut it out. <laughs> Lack of intrinsic motivation. That means from within. I, I, I ain't motivated. When individuals lack a genuine interest or passion for project, they're more likely to lose enthusiasm and abandon it. So these are some of the things that stop us when we think we want to do something. But I want to go a, a little bit deeper now. And this is this next point. Many people, because we're going to the military now, okay? Let's look at what, what happens in the military. Many people rush into the military and they quit. Why? Because they're going without clearly understanding what they're entering. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Some folk go, okay, you know what? I need, I need to join the military. Why? because I need something. Some people on the outside say that you're a slacker. You need to get in the military because they'll help you not become a, be a slacker. They'll help you get your life together. You ever seen people do that? And then the young people, they, their life is a time. Just get in the military so they can make you a man. Let me tell you something. You gotta be a man going in because when you get to the challenges, the ones that's not the man or the woman going in, a lot of times they're the ones that fall to the side because they just yeah. didn't have it going on. Yes. And, and let me tell you something which is interesting. The military back in the 80s, uh, now don't you say I'm old. Back in the 80s, in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, they had about a third of the people that 33% or whatever that signed up didn't finish. Mm. They didn't. But fortunately, there's a group called the RAND uh, Company, they, uh, National Defense Research Group. They did a study on this, to, and they began to see what are some of the reasons. So, and, and I'm going to talk about some of the reasons, but let me say this. 
they did their research to find out why we're we losing so many folk. And so because of the research they did, today only about 5% don't make it. Isn't that something? Went from about 33% down to 5% because they did their research. But these are some of the things they found out, what I'm telling you. They are, they're screening the people before they come in. And so they're beginning to say that, nah, this is a trigger. If we get them in, they ain't going to stay. And what are some of the folk that didn't stay in? It was not just the young folk, but the young folk that had not graduated. Because they found out if you graduate from high school, then you're more likely to be somebody that's an achiever, so we'll let you in. But it wasn't just that they didn't graduate, because some of them that didn't graduate, they did find themselves a job and they were stable. Because when people have a stable track record, even if they didn't graduate high school, they found out, well, you know what, they did get a job and they stayed on it. So when they get in the military, they got some staying power. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because they found even some of the older folk that would go in in their 20s and 30s and go in the military, they would drop out if they would look at them and say, yeah, they graduated, but they can't keep a job. Mm -hmm. So when they have that type of attitude and they come in, they can't fix that. That's something that we've got to learn how to fix. Am, am I talking to somebody? So the, the military learned that there's some folk that we just ain't going to let come in the door because we know they ain't going to stay. Yeah. Right. But are you the type of person that got some staying power? Yeah. Do, do you have some gumption and unction? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and this is what God is talking about through Christ even in our lesson. Now look at this, next point. Some people pledge to follow Jesus not understanding or shall I say fully appreciating the commitment required. Is that you? Why are we in the church today? Is it just for the potluck? <laughs> Is it because they're passing out backpacks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are we in it just to grab because ah, that's what the church is about? Are you about it so that you can get in and you can put something in? Come on, buddy. All right. We will look at three such people that weren't familiar with the requirements in our scripture lesson today. And I'm going to start out with this first one. You can go to this, this uh, uh, scripture here. The first type who makes a big boast or pledge before really counting the cost. First to open their mouth are often the first to leave. Did you know that? Mm. Yeah. The first person to say, I've got your back, Pastor. Yeah. You know, they, they are, they're out the door after they just said it because they haven't really counted the cost. They just say, right. and they just want to say, Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. Or maybe, Yeah, this is a good meal ticket. I'm coming, I'm coming. But then all of a sudden, they see what they got to do once they get there. Ah. Yeah. So Jesus screamed them. And so look at this first scripture, Luke 9, 57 and 58. As they were going along the road, someone said, Jesus, I will follow you any place you go. Have you heard of someone say, I'm with you, I got your back. Yeah. Yeah. And then you turn around and you say, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So this is what Jesus said to him. The foxes have holes to live in. The birds have nests. Even they know how to make a place for themselves. He said, but the son of man, that's me, no place to rest is here. Are you ready for that? Can you handle that? You know, we're in it and we think, ah, oh, Jesus paid it all. And we think we can just sit back in the rocker. Yeah. But oh my God, when you make a commitment for God, it seems like every hellhound in the world comes after you and detach you and say, are you in it for keeps? Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been there? Mm -hmm. He said, no, nah, when, when, you, when you hook up with me, are you ready to go the, the, the distance? Amen. And this person probably wasn't. 
So I want to share with you, and this is in, on the board, um, of how Jesus further elaborated on counting the cost. And it's also in the book of Luke, it's at the 14th chapter. I'm going to read uh, several verses, 28 to 30. If you want to build a tower, Jesus said, you first sit down and decide how much it will cost to see if you have enough money to finish the job. Some people say, I'm going to get it. You know, people even go out house hunting. They see a big house, I like the house, I'm going to buy it. And they ain't got the money to pay. They got maybe a little bit for the down payment, but not to keep the payments because they haven't counted the cost. If you don't, you might lay the foundation, but you would not be able to finish. Then all who would see it would make fun of you, saying, this person began to build, but it was not able to finish it. Yes. Now, this is what I want to go back to the example, because I've, I've seen this in life. I've been a supervisor for 30, 40 years and work with people and, and people have come in the door and in the interview. They sound like they the, the second cousin to Jesus. I can do it. I can do it. Uh -huh. Even going to Africa this last time. Some people say, I'm committed. I had somebody say, I'm committed. I'm going with you. And then the second meeting, they said, I got to leave early. <laughs> and then the third meeting, I got something that came up and I think I'm going to do that. But they said, I, when I make a commitment, by God, I'm going to make a commitment. I said, yeah, that's what I want. And then they didn't commit. But then the people, this is what I, I'm going to tell you. I use this type of person. I say, who wants to do it? Your hand don't go up right away. Why? Because you begin to say, hmm, can I do this? Everybody else is saying it's go up, but yours is the only one that don't go up. Then I'm saying, that's the one I want. <laughs> I say, see me at the church so then I can explain what this is all about. Because then when you talk to that person that doesn't, just ah, I'm in it. But they start counting the cost, say, hmm, can I really do this? Yes, yes. I hope I'm talking to somebody because sometimes we just go out on the limb. I want it! And we get out on the limb and then the limb starts shaking. Oh, pull myself back in. Right. Yes, yes. Jesus talked to some other folk beyond counting the cost. For my next point, look at this next point. Jesus' message to those who choose to follow him is this. Mm. Don't look back. Amen. Come on. Right. Amen. Come don't on. look back. Yes. Not just don't count the cost but yeah. once you get in it don't look back mm -hmm. i don't know how many people i've witnessed to and and they accepted the mission and it came alongside me for a month and sundays but then all of a sudden stuff started happening this that and the other said so this is hard i didn't know what i signed up for yes don't look back Hallelujah. let's see how jesus confronted two more followers who were distracted by priorities that pose the conflict to serving Jesus. See, some of us have conflicts. We, we get in this, we love Jesus, but then all of a sudden this pulls me and that pulls me and you yes. say, then yes. you gotta make a decision. Do, do, right. do I follow or do, do I move? Yes. But when you prepare for battle, buddy, you just stick oh, in there, you don't look back. First is the one with the perfect alibi. Look at this. Look at this next point. Jesus does what? Cautions us against creating perfect excuses to avoid answering his call. Did y'all know that? Oh, wow. Sometimes we can have the perfect, and it sounds, it sounds legit. Yes, yes. Too legit to quit. <laughs> But let's look at verses 59 and 60 of our scripture text. I've got that here. Jesus said to another man, follow me. But he said, Lord, first, let me go and bury, don't no move it yet. Let me go and bury my father. Uh -huh. That sound pretty legit, don't it? Yes. I got, I got, you know, hey, come on now. I got, I got the funeral arrangement. And now, now it's not certain whether he actually meant, some believe that he meant, let me stay back because my dad is getting old. Let me work on him until I bury him and then I'll come. And then some people did believe that, you know, the dad had died. And, and so now who's going to refuse that? Listen to Jesus. But Jesus said to him, let the people who are dead bury their own dead. You must go and tell about the kingdom of God. 
Now, I'm not just going to talk about the bearing of somebody because that sounds pretty legitimate, doesn't it? But you know, there are times, I don't know about you, but I have wanted to go to a funeral. Come on. But I hit another thing, conflict. Yes. May not be my daddy or something, but 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 God had me on another mission. So what I had to do was I had to send flowers. I had to send love. And I said, next time I see you, I'm going to come and encourage you. Yes. But you know what? I've got to be quickened and alive to what God is calling me to yes. do in this moment. Yes. And I, I hope you all hear me and follow me because sometimes people, we can look at people and say, what is wrong with them? They should have done this. They should have done that because it seemed like the appropriate thing to do. Whereas God then called you and said, no, move away, move away, move around for a minute. Maybe I didn't show up for the family reunion. Everybody look at it, wrong with him because God hit me on another mission in Africa. Yes, yes. But the point is when you know that God has called you to something, You've got to begin to say, God, what does that really look like? And sometimes it looks like we've got to, some of the things of the world that seem to be priorities can become distractions. I've got to say that again. Some of the things that seem like they in, on surface should have been a priority is really becoming a distraction. And the devil knows how to set distractions like landmines along your way and you know that you should have showed up for the meeting you know that you should have done this for God but you let the distraction stop you and you went to dead became dead in your very good day what he's really saying is God calls God's call on your life must take priority over all relationships. Jesus gave the perfect example of this when he told his mother and brothers uh, who were present during his teaching and how he handled them when he was told that they were in the building. Shout out to Dee, I hope you hear this message because I heard you say this. Listen to this, this is not a point here. Mark 3 verse 31 to 35. Sometimes, have you ever noticed, sometimes it sounds like Jesus is being callous when he's talking to folk. He said, where did that come from? But he ain't. He's just being on point. Listen to this. And his mother and his brothers came while he was teaching. And standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around and they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. Now we, you know, we, you know, your family out there, you know. Jesus, and hey, yeah, what you want, mama? What you want, brother? Uh -huh. But what did Jesus say? He said, "Who are my mother and my brothers?" And looking around at those who are sitting around, he said, "Here are my mother and my say brothers. It, say it. For whoever does the will of God, he is my mother." my brother, yes. my brother, my sister, and my mother. Yeah. Now that sounds kind of cold-blooded, don't it? Yeah. That's right. But you got to hear the first part of why he said that. See, some of y'all missed this. It's like, uh, it's like the rest of the story. Can I tell the rest of the, the rest of the story happened before he actually got to this point. Listen to verse 20 and verse 21, because I used to scratch my head. I said, God, you mean you dissing your mama and your brothers? Come on. But listen to why he didn't disrespect them. He just put stuff in order. Verse 20 and 21, before we get to this, the scripture says, for a clearer understanding of Jesus, where he said, then Jesus went home, but a crowd gathered. There were so many people that Jesus and his followers couldn't eat. He was just ministering to get back because he saw, he said, my meat is to do the will of my father. So he was about his father's business, ministering to people that needed his word. But listen to this. When his family heard this, they went to get him because they thought he was out of his mind. Yeah. Come on. That's why they showed up. Mm -hmm. They showed up to pull him out of the meat. Is you crazy? Boy, get something to eat. He said, Mama, don't you start that. Right. Do you hear me? 
I hope there's some context because some, and I'm speaking prophetically now, some of y'all are out there and your mama and your father and your this and maybe your homie is trying to pull you and they seem like it's good and people on the outside say, why didn't he go with them? Because God didn't call you to something else to do. And some of us move out because we, we, we feel this kindred spirit and, and our hearts sort of ache. What will they think if I don't show up? I'm saying, what will God think if I don't do the work of God? You got to know that you know that you know. Yes, preach. That's right. Amen. I'm in this for keeps, y'all. Yes. Because when they close the lid on my coffin, my mom ain't going to be in there, my daddy ain't going to be in there, my sister ain't going to be in there, and my homie ain't either, but it's going to be me and Jesus. And Jesus is going, I want him, when he opened the lid, I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. Let's dig it a little deeper, y'all. <laughs> on Jesus' commentary on how we should value ourselves in respect to Jesus. Uh, Luke, uh, and this is not up here, Luke 14, 25 to 27. We're still in that Luke thing. He said, large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me but loves his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, or sisters, or even his own life. More than they love me, he cannot be my follower. Mm. Wow. Make it plain. Wow. Finish wow. the word. Wow. Hallelujah. Why does he say that? Come on. Let me ask you a few questions. Where were you headed before Jesus died for All your right. sins? All right. All right. I couldn't die for my sins. How much do you appreciate what God did in sending his son who loved you enough to cancel your sins? I love him. So I, I, my life is his. I give it to him. And this is the, the kicker. It's because I appreciate his value of me. Do, do y'all hear me? Yeah. So, so when, when God asked me to do something, and when he say jump, I'm going to say how high and when to come down. Yeah. Wow. Go ahead. Go ahead. Am I making sense? Yeah. So he's saying, nah, because some of us get set that I want this pair of shoes, I want this clothes, I want this house, I want this Negro as my husband and this is my wife yeah. and all of that. And sometimes God is saying, are you sure? I'm calling you this way but we get caught up in the stuff and I ain't feeling right I ain't feeling it today it ain't about feelings it's about commitment to Christ am I making sense sometimes I'm speaking to somebody sometimes it appears that when we accept Christ there can be a disconnect between us and homies, us, and family. Yes. And sometimes that disconnect is important for today. Yes. Right. Because you don't win them if you win them on their terms. You win them on God's terms. Oh. And then when you begin to serve God, and they begin to see that yes. your life is blessed, they say, I want some of that. And you say, come on, mama, come on, daddy. Yes. Yes. Because Jesus did not diss his mother when he said, she ain't right right now, so I'm going to kick her under the curve for right now. But what did he say from the cross? He said to his mother, mother, behold your son. And he gave her to John. And John, behold your mother. Take care of my mother. And who was it, the 120 on the day of Pentecost? But his mother and his brothers. Because he knew how to separate long enough for them to get the message and get it right and come alongside. You ain't going to win nobody if you get in the mess with them. So it doesn't mean that we despise people, but we love them in the proper context. Sometimes you got to love the devil out of folk. 
Yes. So, next point, Jesus challenges us never to look back. Yes. Look at the scripture. This is another man. Luke 9, 6, 61, 62. Another man said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go and say goodbye to my family. Now, how cute. Yeah. Yes. Another good excuse, ain't it? Yes, sir. But see, Jesus can see through that. Sound like a good thing. But you know, sometimes we get caught in a web when we go back. Because as soon as we go back, then all of a sudden they come up with reasons as why you need to stay and hang around and chill for a minute. I hope y'all hear me. Luke said, Jesus said, anyone who begins to plow a field but keeps looking back is of no use in the kingdom of God. I'm closing out. Appreciate that. Listen to this. Jesus lived in an agriculture age where his audience is very well familiar with what Christ meant here. If the plowman starts to look back, his plow line will become crooked. If that happens, the field is, he is plowing will not yield a full fruit. So when we go back, what happens? If we keep looking back, re-engaging with the old crowd, our witness will become crooked. Mm. We will be tempted to return to old habits, yes. be given reason to resume old ways, and we'll stay bound. Yes. Yes. So sometimes you just can't look back because we're saying, I just want to go back and say, but you know in your mind that you still got some, some feeling there. Yeah. But there's an appropriate time to go back when you're strong enough and God say, go back and pull them back. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Because sometimes we just got to get caught up in what well, we always did this on such and such birthday and we always did. You're a different person now. Amen. Yeah. We must learn to die daily, avoid distractions, move when and where Jesus directs. Yes. So in closing, last point, I challenge you today, don't look back. Mm -hmm. Don't look back. Hallelujah. Don't look back. Why? Next point, never lose track of our long-term reward in the face of our short-term challenges. Yes. Oh, I, I, I know what I signed up for. I'm going to heaven. Yes. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. I ain't turning back. No, I, I know what the back looked like. I ain't got to be reminded of the mess that I was in. Yes. And last thing, let's start strong and finish strong. Yes. Start strong and finish strong. Don't look back, friends. There's a lot of folk that will give you all kinds of reasons why you should, and God's giving you a reason why you shouldn't. Yes. And that's because heaven is in front of you. Paul said, I, 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 I go forward. He said, I, I press towards the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Don't look back today, friends. Keep looking forward. Your redemption draws nigh. And by all means, have an excellent day. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.